Greetings, my friend. We are all interested in the future, for that is where you and I are going to spend the rest of our lives. And remember, my friend, future events such as these will affect you in the future. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. And now, for the first time, we are bringing to you the full story of what happened on that fateful day. We are giving you all the evidence based only on the secret testimony of the miserable souls who survived this terrifying ordeal. The incidents, the places. My friend, we cannot keep this a secret any longer. Let us punish the guilty. Let us reward the innocent. My friend, can your heart stand the shocking facts about Grave robbers from outer space. on this earth know that there is a time to live and that there is a time to die yet death is always a shock to those left behind it is even more of a shock when death the proud brother comes suddenly without warning just at sundown a small group gathered in silent prayer around the newly opened grave of the beloved wife of an elderly man sundown of the day yet also the sundown of the old man's heart for the shadows of grief clouded his very reason the funeral over the saddened group left the graveside It was when the gravediggers started their task that strange things began to take place. Fifteen to four. Yep, right on schedule. There's the old San Fernando Valley out there now. You better radio in for landing instructions, Danny. Right, Jeff. Burbank Tower, this is American Flight 812. Over. Wouldn't surprise me any if he's asleep this time of the morning. American Flight 812, this is the Burbank Tower. If I were asleep, you'd never get on the ground. In your case, maybe I ought to leave you up there for good. Over. You got me that time, Mac. This is American Flight 812 requesting. <laughs> Over. Holy mackerel. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812. Are you in trouble? Trouble? Take a look for yourself. What in the world? That's nothing from this world. Burbank Tower to American Flight 812. 
Are you in trouble? Are you in trouble? <laughs> mayday, mayday. Stand by, Burbank Tower. You suppose a passenger saw it? I doubt it. Most of them are asleep. But it was quite a jolt, Jeff. I'll check. Good. We'll get it ready for landing. And keep it quiet until we get instructions. Right. Okay, Denny. American flight 812, reporting to Burbank Tower. Over. Did you hear anything? I thought I did. Don't like hearing noises, especially when there ain't supposed to be any. Yeah, sort of spooky-like. Maybe we're getting old. Whatever it is, it's gone now. That's the best thing for us, too. Gone. Yeah, let's go. his wife's death became greater and greater agony. The home they had so long shared together became a tomb, a sweet memory of her joyous living. The sky to which she had once looked was now only a covering for her dead body. she had planted with her own hands became nothing more than the lost roses of her cheeks. Confused by his great loss, the old man left that home never to return again. At the funeral of the old man, unknown to his mourners, his dead wife was watching. First his wife, then he. Tragic. Tell me something. Why was his wife buried in the ground and he sealed in a crypt? Something to do with family tradition, a superstition of some sort. Oh. Well, it's getting dark. Let's be in our way. Then, as two of his mourners left his final resting place, Minutes later, the police, led by Inspector Daniel Clay, arrived at the scene. Who found them? The man and girl. Medical uh, examiner been around yet? Just left. The morgue wagon ought to be along most any time. You get their statement? Yeah, much as we could. They're pretty scared. Finding a mess like this ought to make anyone frightened. Have one of the boys take the guy and the girl back to town. You take charge. Okay, Inspector. What are you going to do? Look around a little. It's pretty dark out there. Once you get beyond the range of those lights, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. I will get one of the flashlights from the patrol car. Hey, be careful, Clay. I'm a big boy now, Johnny. Okay.
Oh, it looks like a bobcat tore into them. Yeah. Say, Lieutenant, did you get that funny odor? How could I miss it? Oh, that'll be the morgue wagon now. That's the fifth siren in the last hour. Oh, something's happened down at the cemetery. A lot of police cars and lights. I stopped, but I didn't see anything. Oh, well, whatever it is, the morning people carry the whole story. You seem to still be up there somewhere. Maybe I am. I don't think I've ever seen you in this mood She's before. Engaged. I guess it's because I've never been in this mood before. Something about your flight? Yeah. What happened, Jeff? I saw a flying saucer. Saucer? You mean the kind from up there? Yeah, well, it's counterpart. It was shaped like a huge cigar. Dan and Edith saw it too. When it passed over, the whole compartment lighted up with a blinding glare. Then there was a tremendous wind that practically knocked us off our course. Well, did you report it? Yeah, radioed in immediately. And they said, we'll keep it quiet until you land. And as soon as we landed, Big Army Brass grabbed us and made us swear to secrecy about the whole thing. Oh, it burns me up. These things have been seen for years. They're here. It's a fact. And the public ought to know about it. There must be something more you can do about it. Only there isn't. Oh, but what's the use of making a fuss? But last night I saw a flying object that couldn't have possibly been from this planet. But I can't say a word. I'm muzzled by Army Brass. I can't even admit I saw the thing. Like crazy. But that apparition we saw had something to do with it. Come on. Is he dead? Yeah. He's messed up as bad as those two back there. I suppose that saucer or whatever it was had something to do with this? Their guess is good as mine, Larry. One thing sure, Inspector Clay's dead. Murdered. And somebody's responsible. You're in charge now, Lieutenant. Yeah, guess I am. Calvin? Yes, sir? Get back up the car and get on the radio. 
Tell the coroner he's got to make another trip out here. Well, how about the lab boys? Well, who do you think we left back up the car? Boy Scouts? Come on, Larry. Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for another. It is always difficult to have last words over the grave of a friend. And Inspector Daniel Clay was a friend, a dear friend to me and to all of us. The bell has rung upon his great career. Now we lay him to rest, a rest well deserved but so premature. People turning south from the freeway were startled when they saw three flying saucers high over Hollywood Boulevard. A woman startled by the sight in the sky telephones the police. There comes a time in each man's life, but he can't even believe his own eyes. Saucer seat over Hollywood. Flying saucer seen over Washington, D.C. The army convoy moved into the field. Rockets were quickly set up. Colonel Tom Edwards, in charge of saucer field activities, was to make the greatest decision of his career. He made that decision. Colonel Edwards gave the signal to fire. as they had come, they were gone, even to the piercing eye of radar and the speeding jet fighters. Quite a sight, wasn't it, sir? A sight I'd rather not be seeing. Are you worried about them, sir? Well, they must have a reason for their visits. Visits? Well, that would indicate visitors. Well, the big gun's the usual way of welcoming visitors. We haven't always fired at them. Oh? For a time, we tried to contact them by radio, but no response. Then they attacked a town. A small town, I'll admit, but nevertheless, a town of people. People who died. I never heard about that, sir. Well, it was covered up by the higher echelon. Take any fire, any earthquake, any major disaster, then wonder. Flying saucers, Captain, are still a rumor, officially. Looks like we beat them off again, sir. What do they want? Where are they from? 
Where are they going? They, sir? Who? Well, this is a training maneuver, sir. We only did a little practice firing at the clouds. Yeah. I wonder what their next move will be. What will their next move be? Your space commander has returned from Earth. Send him in. <laughs> 